Hello and welcome to Darkhaven Gaming. I take my gaming seriously here and these are the core philosophies of this channel. Engaging with the community to create interesting and memorable campaigns and playthroughs. Absolutely no cheating and most importantly following the rule of cool. Picking the most exciting and thematic option are not always the most efficient. So if those are things that appeal to you as a gamer, then please do like and subscribe and click the bell or notification icon. Hello everybody, it's Darkhaven here and I am very excited to be starting a brand new Legendary Difficulty Immortal Empires campaign. We will be playing as the Great Immensity, Grom the Paunch, one of my favourite lords and part of my favourite faction, the Greenskins. Grom's meteoric rise began when, as a young boss of the Broken Axe tribe, he consumed a portion of raw troll. As troll flesh regenerates and Grom, always a big eater, had not stopped to cook the meal, the foul meat writhed in his belly. The race to regrow against the race to digest was on. A lesser goblin would have burst asunder, but Grom was made of sterner stuff. The Battle of the Belly, as the deed came to be known, changed Grom. He grew to prodigious size. It is said that on that day Grom last saw his own legs. Yet so huge and powerful had Grom grown that he no longer needed to see them, and could instead order others to see his legs for him. So Grom's legend began. He quickly rose to be warlord of the Broken Axe tribe, and they spent many happy years plundering the Wolflands, the Badlands, and the Southern World's Edge mountains. By this time, Grom had taken to fighting atop a chariot, as it suited his grandiose proportions. Many goblins travelled far to see the Graten and join his exploits, and at its peak, Grom's war contained hundreds of different tribes. Grom carved his name large in the psyches of men, dwarves and elves, and in whose realms he is still feared and cursed. Even now, rumours sweep the Badlands that his corpulent majesty has returned and is once again amassing an army to launch a new invasion fantastic. So, Grom's faction has access to Grom's Cauldron, which allows you to bestow a variety of buffs to your armies. We have a negative 80 diplomatic relation penalty with High Elves, so we will definitely be fighting them. A global recruitment duration of minus one turn for Goblin units. Don't underestimate how powerful that is, it's incredibly useful when combined with the raiding camp stance that Greens can use, we can constantly recruit. And just for Grom's army, plus 10 leadership when fighting against elves, 10% physical resistance for goblin units, which is very strong, a whopping 50% upkeep reduction for chariot and pump wagon units, and Grom's war replaces the normal war. Uh, Grom's war lets you regenerate as well, so that's incredibly good. The aims of this campaign are to storm into Ulthwan, tearing it up and destroying any who dare challenge us as we move towards a short campaign victory. The army that we will be using to do this will be incredibly varied. So all of these goblin units we'll be able to recruit wherever we want once we've got the relevant buildings and we have access to all of the other wonderful units. I love the Greenskin roster. Super varied, super strong, very fast usually and fun. <laughs> That's the most amazing thing about it. It's all really fun and you can get some quite potent combos uh, from the brilliant Laws of Magic we have, the Big War, and the Little War. We all know how much I love the Foot of Gork. 
Here We Go is amazing. And even the little white Itchy Nuisance is great. Sneaky Stabbing's great. It's a great, great faction to play as. And that's enough of me waffling on about it. Ooh, where are we starting? We all know where we start. We start with Massive Oracle, which is a uh, unique settlement right in the heart of Britonia. So we shall be annoying them initially. War gear, uh, we have hopefully get the Axe of Grom, uh, the fabled Axe of Grom, also known as Elf Biter, which is apparently particularly effective against the pointy eared race. And the Lucky Banner. So this is waved triumphantly by Niblets, a uh, particularly crazy night goblin who rides atop his chariot. And it's uh, seemingly very likely that Grom is based off the Great Goblin from J.R.R. Tolkien's books. The uh, Goblin King, if you remember him, who lives in Goblin Town. The big fat one, if you've watched the Hobbit films. <laughs> you gonna help Grom conquer the world or what? Are we gonna help Grom conquer the world or what? We definitely are. So, how they play? Collect ingredients for Grom's cauldron throughout your campaign and cook powerful recipes to benefit your tribe. Smash through enemies and settlements and increase your tribe's reputation level to receive faction wide bonuses and unlock the call to war. So the call to war button to temporarily swell your unit numbers and target a settlement as the war's prize to raise or occupy in return for rewards. And then lastly, spending scrap to collect it after battles and raising settlements on unit equipment, upgrades and technologies. I suppose it wasn't lastly, we do have the underway as well. So that gives us a lot of mobility. Okay, Grom is hungry. So this is the uh, cauldron. You can, uh, at the moment we've only got one ingredient, but we will unlock more as we go along. So you can see these variety of effects we can add here. Some of a very strong enemy leadership minus eight. Cooldown reduction and increase of winds of magic. Frenzy for goblin and night goblin infantry units, all armies. Um, yeah, casualty replenishment rate. I know. I mean, that one there is pretty strong. Regeneration for goblin and night goblin infantry units. That's super good. But we won't be spending that just yet. River troll hag. This is our river troll hag, a very versatile and potent hero in the green screen roster. I'm just going to rename her Niblet in honor of the flag wielding loon and also because I think <laughs> the fishy tittle muncher is a bit of a mouthful I'll keep things simple for me to pronounce properly uh, it does give us access to the law of death straight off the bat which is very nice let's combine her into Grom's army you can just see that lucky banner on his back there and there is Niblet the goblin. So, just like to also say that I think Grom the Paunch starts with one of the finest starting armies in Immortal Empires. Two units of trolls, brilliant. A goblin rock lover, which will allow us to force the enemy to come to us, which is very useful. And then Grom himself, with his half moon axe and chariot, he's really potent. Armoured anti-infantry and regeneration he's a pain Worship to deal with wrong. there's massive oracle will gain us give us access to all sorts of things my initial thoughts are deal with aquitaine and then we're going to do a bit of a loop so aquitaine um i think it's bastone here apologies no no that's castle bastone there there's another one of their settlements right there which we're going to take care of and then we're going to do a bit of a circle, leveling up, getting XP, taking out Paravon, Quinelles, and then we're going to head across to the Donut, the Heartlands of the High Elves, Wolf One, and we're going to socket to Altharion, which would be uh, 
Easier said than done, I think. I don't think he's going to be a pushover. In we go for our first battle of this campaign. I'm sure there will be many. Armand de Aquitaine uh, is uh, up against it here, I must say. I think I could only lose this if I deliberately lost it. Knights of the Realm he has are pretty potent. They're anti-large. They could probably kill Grom if I left him on their own. But uh, we won't be doing that. A lovely verdant map. Looks very nice indeed. Okay, so. Let's place our catapults here. Shoot them for a bit. And then send everything in. Would like to just have a little look at Grom up close. Cool. There's the banner. There's Niblet. And there's Grom's axe, Elf Biter. Uh, let's target the swordsman for now. I think the knights of the realm are going to be too hard to hit with a catapult because of the AI changes. They do like to dance around now as they dodge my uh, missiles. Doesn't matter that it doesn't, even if it doesn't do any damage, uh, the catapult, although it should do and it has done, it's just very useful to make the AI come towards us. And then we can uh, better pick and choose our engagements, making sure that our, you know, the right units go into the right targets. Very important on higher difficulties. You have to get efficient trades. Very similar to if you played a tabletop, which I hope you do, because Age of Sigma is amazing. And I think there is an avid Warhammer Fantasy community as well. Uh, lastly, I'd just like to apologise that this is not being streamed live. I am actually away the weekend this goes up. I will be resp able to respond to comments, but my apologies, this not being streamed live. Okay, it's done some decent damage there. Split that damage up slightly. Definitely going to be using Spirit Leech on the Lord Armand. And I'm going to send. Those units there. Let's pretty much move on with everything. I'm not sure how I feel about the uh, dodging, My if I'm honest. Don't fail. It is what it is. And uh, I think they've pretty much lost now. Knights of the Realm. Got into those trolls. Did do a fair bit of damage. But I'm going to be able to regenerate all of that. As long as I get them out now. Don't really want to be losing any entities. At this point. Oh. Yeah, they did. Managed to rout the trolls. Okay.
Trolls have come back. I've lost two entities or trolls, but they're going to regenerate slowly. I'm sure I'll be in a decent shape before you know it. So she's got the um, overwhelming older minus six melee attack in an area is very strong. And I do believe these monstrous trolls, these trolls here have it as well. So it's very nice to mainly go, I usually go mostly stone trolls with a few river trolls just for that epic debuff. There we go. A decisive victory, as we all knew it would be. I did lose nine. That's quite a lot. <laughs> they lost 359. I don't think I need to take the replenishment at the moment, although 17 is quite a lot, isn't it? We're just going to take the money. Swap them for something useful. Okay. Let's <laughs> go for <laughs> Root Marcher. His movement is going to be key. As hopefully we can hit a relatively early attack on uh, Ivress. We don't want to give the High Elves too long to grow. So, here we go. I'm sure we'll win this. No problem. So, let's do our usual trick, I think. Shoot them. Targeting the spearmen. They are the only uh, threat. I say that in a loose term here. These peasants are going to be of no concern. The men at arms are of no concern because they're armed with spears. So I'm going to tag things up. Let's go goblins into the bowmen. Let's go archers into the spears. And then we're going to go River Trolls. There, there, there. Grom right down the middle. And I think that probably be... Uh, no, that probably be it. This is going to be unpleasant for the Bretonians, to say the least. Oh, those stone trolls look good. Goblins, pump wagons. Okay. 
Let's breathe some acid onto these uh, archers. Not bad. Just cycle charge with Grom. Probably the easiest unit he'll face. Peasants. Probably is one of the easiest. Maybe like zombies or something. Could be uh, statistically lower. Let's just chase them down. Just to get some XP and also let our guys heal a bit. Oh, nice. So the wire's going to let us heal the other units as well. Look at that healing go. That, was, that wasn't bad. Probably wasn't far off 10% of their health back, you know. Good stuff. What an army this is going to be. All the strong units of the Greenskin roster with Grom's very powerful cauldron and bonuses from his uh, skill trees. Definitely one of the strongest lords, I think, in Immortal Empires. Okay, got some scrap, some money. I'm going to raise this. So usually I like to colonize and build a sort of empire. But in this campaign, I'm going to try and play things a bit differently. By raising this settlement, I will give the AI a target to keep try and to constantly send armies to colonize it. So we can pick them off. And also... We don't have to worry about it. Because of our global recruitment, we can just get a couple of, like a hub, maybe two hubs built that we can recruit from wherever we need and, and go from there. The the a serial looter there for Grom. Grom yep, yeah, and then, yeah, pump, pump him into the raiding camp. Do I... Go down here. So let's have a look. Ah, he's got a different. Nice. How strong is that? So he gives a melee defense and leadership buff and immune to psychology. Augment. Uh, last 16 seconds. Not too amazing, really. Uh, but this one's pretty tasty. Base weapon damage, melee attack, and leadership increase that last 21 seconds not bad we can also get an upkeep cost reduction which is useful I think because of the cauldron and the already active benefits we're getting from the faction to goblins I think I can go blue first so raiding I'm not too fast about looting I'm not too fast about <laughs> or ravaging I might take death from below evasion chance when using the underway so we can skittle off from those annoying elves in all one because it's quite closely, closely packed over there and if we can say jump across these mountains hit and run easier I think that will be a benefit so again taking something I don't usually go for this one I will go for death magic first that will be Niblet's target and then we're going to recruit some goblins yes they're a little bit more expensive but we got the money massive oracle nothing we can do there at the moment I will recruit another Lord sooner rather than later, but not this turn, perhaps once we've come back round. An easy 
technology choice there commandment available look at this one camp ruckus control growth and corruption bonuses just what we want and the cauldron are not going to activate at the moment let's end the turn uh, no diplomacy I didn't bother checking it not too fast about diplomacy in this campaign that's very much a high elf -y thing and the high elves will be hopefully a smouldering ruin sooner rather than later ah mission issued Grom had been guilty of resting on his laurels in the past, especially when the spoils of war and the ensuing victory banquets were particularly good. If it had not been for the sinister encouragement of his power crazed shaman, Old Blacktooth, Grom's ambitions may not have always been backed up by his actions, and he certainly wouldn't have gotten off his corpulent rump to lead Broken Axe's first invasion of Ivress. Unfortunately, Blacktooth eventually had his head lopped off by that pointy eddy git, Eltharion. But before that had but before he had his head chopped off, had absorbed copious amounts of power from destroyed waystones. So much power in fact that it made him rather difficult to actually be killed, even after having his se head severed from his body. Before Grom had given up on rallying his fleeing troops from Tor Ivress, he'd spotted his shaman's head on the ground, shrieking angry obscenities at him. So he put it in a jar before fleeing himself. Since that day, Blacktooth's head mostly spurted unintelligible nonsense. Being devoid of a body can do that to an orc. Recently, however, he started saying things that grabbed Grom's attention claiming that he knew how to get the war going again. The first thing he suggested Grom do, however, is throw a feast to motivate the lads. Never turning down an excuse for a banquet, Grom bellows to them to grab some scrap to get the cauldron fire going. And now. So if we complete this quest, which we will do at the end of the turn, we will get Blacktooth's head in a jar. Now this lets us summon yeah, that's right, summon a rogue idol, which are very good. And we can equip that on our uh, shaman. Can we reach? Yes, we can. So, our second battle. Excuse me, third fight, but uh, second settlement. Bordelow. I said Bastone earlier, I apologize. A crushing defeat. I don't think so. They don't come out to play, do they? This is a capital yet. So let's continue the siege. And uh, let's use our cauldron to give all of our goblins regeneration. Ooh, how much does it cost? Ah, can we not do it yet? That is a shame. <clears throat> we'll be alright without it. I thought we could... Uh, no. Go for it. We can't. Uh, let's go for Go Faster to improve our movement. I think because we're going to take them anyway. So, let's have a look at their garrison. Trebuchet is going to be annoying. But we can shut it down. Knights, Aaron, yeah, nothing to worry about there really. Archers, we can take out. Spearmen, yeah, I don't see how we're going to lose this. We'd have to play incredibly badly, which I have done before. <laughs> but I'm very keen to show you what I can do with the Greenskins. I think the Greenskins and I are a good match. not too big on the admin side of things you don't have to management your set manage your settlements too well all you have to do is go out and attack aggressively 
Something I think I'm good at. Okay. Is that the wall for us? I think I prefer this one. I don't know why. Catapult's probably going to get some shots on us. Grom and Co. will be smashing down the gate. The archers can be out in the open, tempting any potential shots, and the rock lobber will fire away. So let's just get some grouping here. Group one, group two, group three, oh. and group four. Group one, start. In we go. Two, over the walls. Three, go up there and shoot. And definitely lock, lob some rocks over the walls. The trees there giving us a little bit of cover, but I'm going to take some damage. However, most of these units here have got regeneration. Sadly, I couldn't give the whole army regeneration. I thought I could, but as I say, I'm not going to lose this. Even though they do have quite a few spears in here, it's not going to be enough to stop us. Probably will raise the settlement. to see how the goblins perform against men at arms should win that 30 the 27 39 and 80 they've got better stats than us we've got some physical resistance uh, not too bothered about that spell I will be killing that lady pretty quickly that's uh, a trebuchet off Gates won't last much longer. Excellent. Great fight. Awaking of the wood has slowed us down. In we go. So, just going to be too much for them, really. Going to send my orcs up the wall. Bashing on their catapults. Let's see if we can finish off that trebuchet. Probably not. Lovely, lovely. Right, where is their lord? Let's go and kill him. Her, I think. We're going to get a war shortly. It's going to help heal everybody. Nice. Army wide heal. Strong. Very strong. Okay, yeah, that's into the them. Let's kill the Lord. And let's get a pump wagon into there to take out that. Let's see if we can get some shots into those knights. I'm going to keep this river troll hag back. Just for the leadership bonus. Good, good, good. Elf fight is ready. 
The biggest war boss! Good fight! Oi! Might be able to breathe acid on them from there, not sure. Can she grab the wall? Don't think she can. No. The Lord's in trouble. I do have quite a few troops on the wall. It's a shame I don't have any uh, area effect. Yet, a foot of Gork would do a, a wonderful job there. Should get another war any moment. Good, good, good. More healing. I think the uh, altar resource said crushing defeat, right? <laughs> Doesn't look like it's going to be a, a crushing defeat at all. Enemy lord. About to die. to chase. Rom's getting a little bit far off. Bit of a waste really but might as well do a little bit more damage with a spirit leech on that unit. River Trolls about to kill the Knights Errant. Their Lord should be gone. Why do they keep stopping? That's uh, pretty annoying, I've got to say. Should have killed that Lord. I've chased it down. This will be the third time I've sent them to kill that Lord, and it's just uh, not happened. speed things up. There we go. Decisive victory, not a crushing defeat. Army still in decent shape. Those two wars and their healing did a great job. I think he's got the best war because the army wide heal so strong. Okay, decisive victory. So, we could sack it, rest, and raise it next turn. But we don't really need the money. I think we're just going to raise it, you know. Bye bye, Bordelow. And that's the end of them. <laughs> nice. New ingredient. We've got our uh, black suit's head in a jar, we've destroyed Aquitaine, we can go back into raiding camp stance, let's equip the arcane item, now Grom doesn't have an arcane slot, but Niblet does, which is very nice, and we've got some skill points to spend here, sticking on the blue line, playing it safe. Sadly, going a little bit efficient there, I must say. But we don't need any replenishment. We're okay. Uh, life leeching. Yeah. And then recruitment. We've got a couple of archers already. Let's just go for some more goblins. Nothing to build there. Zooming out. Ending the turn. And 
coming towards the end of this first episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I absolutely have. And I'm very much looking forward to carrying on. Hopefully our plan works. But we'll find out next time together. Take care guys. I enjoy speaking to you. And I'll be speaking to you soon. Goodbye.